The Princess of Wales makes a rare public appearance while King Charles privately meets with families of three young girls who tragically died. Plus, Meghan Markle is ready for a reinvention as she sets to launch American Riviera Orchard. And royal author Christopher Anderson breaks down Prince William and Queen Camilla's complicated relationship. Believe me, no, there is no more stressful person in the royal family or stress-causing person. Uh, you know, when it comes to ulcers, uh, Camilla is definitely a carrier. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hey everyone, I'm Christina, and that's Christine, and welcome to Royally Us. We had a week off last week, but we are back. We are feeling the summer spirit just like the royals. <laughs> yes, definitely. I think we're sort of creeping towards the end of everyone's summer holidays, so hopefully we have lots of royal stories this week and maybe some more next week, too. Definitely. I feel like we're ramping back up. And we even had a surprise appearance from uh, the Princess of Wales. Um, she was spotted arriving at Scotland's Crathy Kirk on uh, August 25th for the venue's weekly church service. Um, she, th there were some photos that were obtained by the Daily Mail. She rode in a car with her husband, Prince William, and sported a beige trench coat and a brown feathered fedora. The Prince of Wales opted for a navy suit. Um, the outing also included King Charles, Queen Camilla, and Uncle Prince Edward. They were also pictured arriving at the service at Balmoral. So it's nice to see her out and about. Uh, Prince William has lost his scruff as well, so it seems like he's going <laughs> back into work mode as well just in case he's listening we really liked the beard and it would be fine <laughs> everyone would be okay if it came back it would be fine everybody would <laughs> but it was it was so nice to see the princess of wales at this event but you know church service on sunday is very much a family event when they're at balmoral and when they're at sandringham um yeah. interestingly the princess of wales wore the exact same outfit to church at balmoral last year same hat same coat same earrings so you have to wonder if she did she leave those pieces there is this like her balmoral uniform it looks very mm -hmm. sort of scottish very regal um and great for sort of those formal royal church services but i think a lot of people were wondering why she chose like that piece for piece outfit mm. repeat Right. Maybe, yeah, like you said, maybe it was like a last minute decision. She's like, what's in the closet? Let's yeah. just go with this. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we always love that she loves to rewear her outfits and proves that she's just like us. So yeah. uh, great to see her out and about and uh, attending a church service. But yeah, it's uh, definitely the Royals are getting back into uh, work mode and also giving back. King Charles, he privately hosted the families of the three young girls who died at a Taylor Swift themed dance on August 21st. Um, the Buckingham Palace released a statement saying His Majesty met with the bereaved families at Clarence House earlier today. Uh, they didn't release any more details of the meeting as it was a private event. Um, one day prior, the King visited Southport, England to spend time with the survivors of the July 29th attack. He also met with members of the local community and emergency staff who responded to the attack. While he was there, he did tell reporters that he wasn't he, he wasn't feeling too bad amid his cancer battle. So nice that he spent some time to privately meet with these families. I'm sure it meant a lot to them during this really tragic and horrific time. Yeah, this, this tragedy was really felt throughout the UK. People were deeply moved by what was such a horrific attack on, on young girls at, you know, at his fun dance class. And so I think the king was said to have waited for an appropriate time because obviously when they're in the real depths of their grief, they're not looking to be social. Um, so mm -hmm. I think it was lovely that he went not only meeting with the families, but meeting with members of the community, like we said, emergency services who responded to the attack, because it really, it affected that entire community, that entire yeah. town, um, especially with the riots that followed. It was, mm -hmm. it was a huge, huge incident um, for this area, but really for the UK as a whole, this was really, really shook lots of people to their core. Yeah, it's such a senseless, horrific tragedy. It really is. But nice that the, he was able to take some time for those families. I'm sure it meant a lot. All right, let's spill the royal tea. And this is interesting. King Charles has laid off younger brother Prince Andrew's 10-person private secretary team. This is according to a new report that he, uh, Charles has been funding Andrew's guards since 2022 when he was stripped of his royal titles and lost publicly funded protection. So The Sun, which published a report about the firing, speculated that Charles may ask Andrew and ex-wife Sarah Ferguson to move out of the residence as well. 
Andrew lives with uh, a Fergie at the Royal Lodge in Windsor, which is a 31-room mansion where his private secretary team was stationed. The report claimed that Andrew's guards will finish out their contracts set to end in October and will not return to the residence. The future of Andrew's security team is unclear. Um, Us Weekly did reach out to Buckingham Palace for comment. But I feel like we've been talking about this for quite some time, that uh, they've been trying to get him out of the Royal Lodge, and he's just not budging. Yeah, we've heard this is an ongoing story. Clearly, Mm -hmm. they want him out of Royal Lodge. (laughs) It is a 31-room mansion that was maybe more suitable for, you know, the Queen's son with Mm -hmm. two young children. You know, decades ago when Prince Andrew moved in, it probably made more sense than for this non-working, retired, sort of, you know, can't go into the public eye prince. Um, Yeah. It's definitely time for him to sort of, you know, move move on and make, I don't know what to, I don't know how to phrase this, but, you know, he needs to make the grown-up choice, although so far we haven't seen a lot of that from him. But I, this is just a step in the right direction, isn't it, from King Charles sort of pushing that um, decision a little bit harder, really putting his foot down as much mm-hmm. as I think he can without blowing this into a huge scandal. Right. No, they're going to have him, they're going to drag him out kicking and screaming, it feels like at this point. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, what do you need with 31 rooms? You're not not using them all. (laughs) Right. And I think they're trying to avoid the kicking and screaming. But it's definitely getting to the point where King Charles, I think, is like, okay, so clearly you won't go out when we ask nicely. So we maybe have to force his hand a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. <laughs> All right, well, this was a, a really interesting story. So Lady Louise Windsor is set to make history as the first female royal to serve in the military since the late Queen Elizabeth. Now, she is the daughter of the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh and is keen on serving her king and country and has fallen in love with the Army cadets, which she does alongside her studies at St. Andrews University. This is according to a report by The Sun. Uh, the 20-year-old is a member of St. Andrews University Officers Training Corps, which provides paid military training for students. I love this. I I hope that this report is true, that she is following in her grandmother's footsteps and uh, a really great story and great, great way to give back. Yeah, absolutely. Lady Louise Windsor has just proven time and time again to be such an incredibly inspiring royal. We know that she had like a part-time job at a garden center. She's gone to uni for very normal down-to-earth coursework. Mm -hmm. She's participating in the army cadets and might pursue a military career. I have heard that she's an incredible stateswoman. She's very um, charming and personable when she's at these royal events. And I I Mm -hmm. hope, and this is just in vain, that these steps are sort of building up her resume to be a working member of the royal family mm-hmm. because i think she would be an incredible diplomat for the uk and for the royal family and just every story that pops up from her we're all like oh that is so cool oh i love that yeah. oh that's amazing mm-hmm. no definitely it definitely seems like she may be a future senior member of the royal family since it's so slimmed down and since you know we don't really have a lot of 20 somethings uh in the royal family so it seems like she's definitely leading the path for the future so very cool to see this and to see what she does um in the years ahead all right well in this week's issue of us weekly on our cover story we are looking into the upcoming reinvention of Meghan markle as she gears up for her new netflix series and the launch of american riviera orchard a source tells us that Meghan has transitioned from actress to royal to entrepreneur she's worn many hats but she believes age and experience have prepared her for a bigger purpose in life she's very happy with the role that she has carved out a family friend add after spare they realized okay we're ready to move on we want to focus on our future we can have meaning and importance separate from the lives we had previously but of course being a mom is still her number one uh, priority with a friend telling us they take the kids to school they pick them up and they are very active and present with them throughout the day I feel like we have been a broken record about this, and this is the path that we've always wanted to see Harry and Meghan go down to focus on their uh, charities, their entrepreneurial work, and maybe this this is the step in the right direction, but we don't know how the public is really going to react to this. Yeah, totally agree. We've said that we Mm -hmm. would like for them to really lead with the charity work, the entrepreneurial work. Mm We know that motherhood is is key to Megan, not just mm-hmm. in her presence with her own children, but also in the work that she does and the charities that she supports. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, we we really need to see more of this rather than hearing about 
what might mm -hmm. what might eventually happen right. um and again seeing how the public would would react to that i think it's it's still going to be a slow and steady race for them but hopefully we mm -hmm. can see good things from them soon Definitely, hopefully. And maybe by the end of the year, we'll have the launch of her products because we've been talking about that for a while too. We have the new yeah, Netflix are, series. Yeah. <laughs> Where, Where's the jam? We need, we need the jam. And this Netflix series, I think it's around like gardening and cooking and things like that. So I feel like maybe we'll see kind of like a, we've talked about this too, like the Gwyneth Paltrow, Joanna Gaines, that's kind of the vibe I think that we're going to get from her. Yeah. And I think, you know, if she can tie it in, in like a barefoot Contessa way to yes. line mm -hmm. of products, um, I think mm -hmm. that that would be, people love, I mean, women love that, especially, I think we yes. would respond to it really, really well. Maybe we'll see mm -hmm. like a Christmas cooking, you know, homemaking, uh, decorating special. Yeah. And that can sort of, because uh, we remember the, the Archwell podcast sort of started with a Christmas mm -hmm. special. And so, I, I think we're all just hoping to see something at this point. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, and we'll talk all about it when it comes. <laughs> all right, well, let's break down the royal rules. And in last week's Us Weekly cover story, we explored the dynamic between Prince William and Queen Camilla. And to further break that down even more, we spoke to royal author Christopher Anderson. Take a look. So it seems like still after all these years, there's definitely some distance. Would you say that the cancer diagnosis for both Charles and Kate... Has Camilla been there for both of them? You know, obviously for Charles, but has she been there for Kate as well? I don't think, you know, the funny thing is I don't think she's been asked to be, and I don't think that it would necessarily help matters. So mm. what's, what's yeah. Camilla in the picture, particularly? Because it just, uh, you know, I mean, one wonders what parts, uh, what role stress plays in, in not only recovering, but in perhaps contributing to the cause, you know. So, and, and believe me, not, there is no more stressful person in the royal family or stressful causing person uh, you know when it comes to ulcers uh camilla is definitely a carrier you know she's still, she's definitely one of those people who uh has stirred up the pot but done it so expertly and so quietly and behind the scenes i hate to see her do it again has it has this brought she and william closer together because i know that they have had to step out together um on certain occasions and you know maybe but well, they're expert at it aren't they i mean all of this is going on, and yet to the public, William is just turning this, you know, turning on the, the smile and charm, and, and he's uh, not going to sulk in public. Now, behind the scenes, it's another matter. I mean, of course, they're all devastated by this cancer, twin cancer diagnosis, and, the, and they're having to cope with it. But publicly, you, you'd never know it. And I think they're, they're, they're capable of looking as if, uh, you know, they can stand each other. But of course, Harry and, and Meghan uh, are really uh, in the Camilla's crosshairs, uh, it, you know, as far as uh, the exit and whatnot. I mean, she's one of those people who has lobbied to just keep them where they are and not welcome them back into the family. Yeah, it definitely seems like over the years their relationship has evolved and uh, from a very frosty, icy beginning. And it seems like since, like, especially with the cancer diagnosis, a more uh, welcoming relationship. Yeah, I think it's just, no matter what, I think it's lovely that they can support each other because they both, mm -hmm. you know, share a very strong love for King Charles. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Royally As. Christine, thank you so much as always. This was fun. I'm looking forward to the royals getting back into the swing of things. Yes. The summer is almost coming to an end. It's almost coming to an end, and we are we are here for it. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Royally Us. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you next week.